the question was, what would be the best way to study for the CSA free response questions? Oftentimes the questions are hard to read, which take away time to write the actual code. I particularly have English language learners who are very bright, capable programmers, but it takes them so much time to fight through the English text that I emphasize to them, but I also think it benefits for all students to don't go to this first slide, which is the text associated with the question first. I tell them that perspective of when you're on a development committee and you're writing questions, you write the code, you determine what that code's gonna do, and oftentimes the names of the methods, the parameter list, and the return type tells you exactly what that code is gonna do. So why do you write all that text? Because as a development committee member, you have to anticipate all the possible questions you think any student may have. And so then they write the text to fill in those, those gaps. But if I look at that code and immediately jump to the name of the class, the functionality associated with that type and realize there are no instance variables and there are no constructors, I know that's a type that I'm going to be using for this particular problem. And I just need to remember a gizmo is something that can get its maker, is elect check to see if it is electronic and check to see if it's equal to another gizmo. They need to be able to look at that and understand by glancing at the code that that's the abstraction they need to go to the next step. Now, when I move here again, I could start reading that, but if I jump straight to that code and say, not only do I know what this class is, an online purchase manager, which keeps track of online purchases. Why? Because that's the name of the class and it should tell you what it is. Purchases is a variable and it's an instance field that I know I'm gonna be using. Otherwise they wouldn't have included the instance field in the problem. And I know that instance field is an array list of gizmo references. And then finally, when I see part A and part B, that's what your student should immediately start thinking about in terms of how could I write that, that particular method. And when it says count electronics by maker, that tells me I'm gonna write code to count up how many of the electronics are there based on a certain maker. And I ask myself, what, how am I gonna figure out what the maker is? the string maker is the parameter that's going to tell the writer of this class what they're supposed to use to determine which maker it is. So I'm going to check to see if this maker matches up with the maker that is associated with each object that I'm going to refer to in that, that uh, array list. Same here, has adjacent equal pairs. Adjacent may not be a word that students are comfortable with, and that's where they start reading this returns true if any pair of adjacent purchase given or false, still not quite sure. So finally, after just looking at the code and, and hopefully not having to read a lot of text, if they look at these uh, tables that the College Board usually provides and it says, is electronic, true, false, false, they can look at the particular examples given the particular list of gizmos and they can check to see whether or not their understanding of maker and electronics and all of the variables associated with that method really match up what they thought. They can see the input and see the output produced. They can also come down here and look at count electronics by maker and see the actual counts. So especially for those English language learners, get them used to abstracting the types and the methods, and if associated with fields, making sure they understand the fields. In some cases, they have to read the constructors. If they do that, then when they read the text, I think it will make much more sense. And oftentimes, they don't even have to write the, read the text because the code itself is descriptive enough to where they can finish.